Good morning. It is um, just after seven, and um, I'm just so tired. Uh, I really struggled to get up this morning, but I'm up. I'm dressed, and I'm just waiting for my guide. And then I'm gonna go have lots and lots of coffee. And um, then we'll do our morning drive before I leave uh, the camp. But, but I'm still very, very tired. But it'll be okay. It's gonna be a good day. Not long after we started our drive, my guide got a call from one of the other guides that he spotted a female lion with her cub, so of course, we shifted direction and went to go check it out. When we arrived, we discovered that it was a mom and her three cubs. I literally pulled up and was like, The grass was so overgrown you could hardly see them aside from their little tails. We were about to go drive around to get a better angle when we spotted a male lion heading towards them. Things got a little heated for a sec, or maybe he was just saying what's up, who knows. <laughs> Either way, we decided we needed to drive around and get a better view. As we pulled up, you could see the babies got really antsy. Because they're so young, they haven't gotten as used to the jeeps being around yet. The female immediately took off and her babies quickly followed behind her. Her first priority is to make sure that her babies are safe and comfortable at all times. We seen that there was actually another male lion already there, so we knew it was the brothers, the same brother lions that I showed you from both part one and part two. So the older brother is the one that had just walked up. It's unclear though if that recent exchange was with the younger brother or the female. Eventually, the older brother got up and we decided to follow him to see where he was heading in hopes that he would lead us back to the female and the cubs. If these brothers had not mated with the female, those cubs would not be safe. Male lions will not tolerate the presence of any cubs that are on their own. If you remember from part one, I mentioned that these two male brothers had formed a coalition, which meant that they chose to live together as long as as the older and stronger one retained dominance, and that when it came to mating, the female normally lasts much longer than the males, so they would essentially take turns mating with her. As a result, there is no way to determine 100% which one of them is the father. 
but because of their coalition, they both have just accepted the babies as their own, and therefore the cubs are safe in this territory. We were right, he led us right to them. But this time, we kept our distance because we didn't want to startle the cubs again. It's hard to see, but the mom and the cubs are there in those bushes on the right. The other guide also told us that the female had just recently killed a zebra, so naturally we went to go find it. It wasn't very far from where they were and there was really not much left of it at all. Based on the size of the legs, we knew it wasn't a fully grown zebra, but still they absolutely devoured it. It was a pretty fresh kill, so likely the female had, had killed the zebra the day before and then if you remember from part 2, the brothers had just finished their oryx and were on the hunt for food. So they came across the female eating and they chased her away from the meal and then started eating it themselves, just like men, to make the females do all the work and then just show up and reap the benefits. <laughs> If the brothers hadn't shown up, this zebra probably would have lasted the female about three or four days to eat, and the smell of the decomposing carcass would have been a lot stronger. This was definitely a really good spot for a kill because the watering hole is literally right there. It doesn't get much better than that. So the older brother was still just hanging out in the same spot, but we couldn't see the mom and her cubs anymore, so we circled around to get a better angle. We found them hanging out under some shade and seen that the younger brother had joined them as well. By this time, the older brother walked over. I guess he didn't want to be left out. It also seemed like the older brother was just really happy and in a very good mood. Look at him smiling. It's actually kind of creepy. The cubs were literally just so cute. I could have literally just sat there all day watching them do absolutely nothing. <laughs> but we watched them long enough. We didn't have a lot of time before we had to head back to camp so that I could catch my flight. So we continued our search for the giraffes.
unfortunately, we never found them. Who would have thought it would be so hard to find a giraffe? <laughs> Time to leave. Sad. Oh well. And there's my ride. lying when they said how beautiful it was to fly over the Okavango Delta. Just wow. landed in the Delta and um, it was about an hour flight um, but apparently the other airstrip closer to the camp I'm going to is flooded so we now have to take a boat there um, which is about an hour boat ride and I had to walk across this like swamp and those boats and I almost died because they're literally just boats floating on the water and um yeah i almost died but i made it and now we're here and we're gonna take this boat ride
it is completely just open. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It is beautiful. Got a view from the toilet. Okay, you guys. So here's my room where I'll be staying for the next couple of days while I'm at the Shindy camp in the Okavango Delta. You walk in and there's a desk, some water, a nice full-size mirror, and a nice huge king-size bed. And then here's the bathroom. This one's a little fancier than the one at Dinaka. And robes, and then the shower is just everything. And then again, a really nice outdoor shower, which I was explicitly advised not to use at night because jaguars are known to hang out in the trees. <laughs> Okay, it is about 3, just before 3.30 p.m. I got to the room around just before 2. I'm really tired, so I took a quick hour nap. Um, but now I'm gonna go have high tea, and then we're gonna go on a game drive. Um, unfortunately, it is not just me this time. Um, and there's some other couple from friends who will be joining as well so we'll see how how that goes but i am really excited and um the view from my room is really nice you can't really tell but through those trees um i could see a bunch of impala and birds and i literally just seen a hippo pass by i don't know where he went but so that was really cool so I'm excited till we see it. Hopefully, hopefully, we find those damn giraffes because I need some giraffes. Okay. Walking through the camp was literally just like walking through a rainforest or something. So many huge, tall trees and bushes. It was honestly just beautiful. And oh look, there's that hippo I seen from my room. Let's go check out this pool. I definitely have to find some time to swim since I didn't get to at Danaka. So there's this nice seating area here and this is where we actually had high tea before going on the drive. And then up the ramp is the main lounge area. bottom there's a deck with a fire pit and bar and just look at these views of the water and then back upstairs is the main dining area and another lounge area and then in the back is the washroom I showed you guys earlier. And from the upper deck, the views are just even more spectacular. When I first arrived, we had lunch up here and literally just seen an elephant walking by. Like, it was great. And then it was time for a game drive. I was so excited. 
Before even driving off, there were a bunch of storks and other birds fishing in a watering hole. It's really cool how they hunt. They'll use their wings and spread them out to create shade, which attracts the fish, and then they'll just use their beaks and grab them. Almost immediately, I could feel the difference from the Kalahari. It is obviously a lot wetter and muddier here, so the roads were really rough and bumpy. You had to hold on as we were driving. Not far into our drive, we spotted a herd of elephants, two adults and a baby that was about four years old. And then we seen another adult and baby that was about two years old coming to join them from the distance. Baby elephants get their tusks at about two years old and you can normally tell the males and the females apart because the males have much bigger tusks than the female. These are all adult female elephants here and the little baby elephant you can't really see but its tusks are just coming in. The herd is led by a matriarch, which is an old female who moves around showing the youngsters all that she knows about where there is good food, watering holes, etc. end of the elephant's trunk it's actually like two fingers and they use those to pick things up in this case they were eating the fruit that had fallen from the tree and if you notice when they're eating the trunk doesn't even touch their mouth they literally just throw the food in even though they have really thick skin it is extremely sensitive even if a fly was to land on them they can feel it and their ears never stop flapping. They actually do that as a way to cool themselves down. Elephants walk so slowly, but because their stride is so large, they can actually cover very long distances. And for such a big animal, they walk in complete silence. You don't even hear their footsteps. And then we've seen some impala grazing. Just before coming across a whole family of warthogs. They were pretty unbothered by us and walked really close to the jeep, but they really didn't pay attention to us at all. They just kept about their business eating the grass. We passed by some zebras. One of them even had these two birds that was just chilling on it. Then there were some impala and also a bunch of monkeys that were in the trees and also in the surrounding area on some fallen branches. Our guide decided to climb the tree and instantly you could see the monkeys in the distance become very alert trying to figure out what was happening and if they were in danger. 
even though these monkeys were all spread out, they are all part of one troop. They scatter along the ground and also in the trees, but are always on the lookout for danger and will alert the others if they spot anything. You also normally find the monkeys associating with the impalas because they help each other. If the monkeys are in the trees, they can see things the impalas can't, so their alerts warn the impalas that there is danger and vice versa. If the monkeys are on the ground, the impalas can see things that they can't see, so the impalas alerts warn the monkeys of danger. Then we spotted a really large herd of impalas and decided to just watch them for a while. We actually witnessed one male that kept chasing this one female impala. He was keeping very close tabs on her, essentially to make sure she didn't stray too far and also that no other males approached her. zebras grazing and even a little baby one just relaxing in the grass without a worry in the world. In part two I asked you whether zebras were white with black stripes or if they're black with white stripes. Well surprisingly they are actually black with white stripes and if you were to shave a zebra they would be completely black. Then we came across a spot where the road had been completely submerged. The guide had to stop and evaluate and basically advise us to remove anything that was on the floor of the jeep because it was likely going to get wet. At this point, my feet were resting on the ledge and the floor did indeed get flooded, but thankfully we made it through and didn't get stuck.
then we came across another one which was like a pool it looked so much deeper than the first one the guide even went as far as to put all of his stuff in plastic and also to take off his shoes before we went in i just completely put my feet up on the chair and just hoped the water would not reach that high and was holding my breath hoping that we would not get stuck because there is no way i would be getting out of the jeep a large male elephant hiding in the bushes here. He clearly just did not want to be bothered at all. By the time we were ready to stop for our sundown or drinks, the guide realized we had a flat tire. While the guide was fixing the tire, I was just enjoying the sunset. Just got back to my room. I went and had the game drive. Unfortunately, no drafts, but we'll be on it tomorrow. Um, and then came back, we had drinks by the fire, and then um, dinner, and guys, I had Kadoo. 
but it's basically just a species of antelope. And anybody who knows me knows that I don't eat anything. Like I'm probably the pickiest person in the world. But I was like, you know, it's fine. I'm here. And it was actually pretty good. It literally just tasted like beef. It was like a little bit sweeter, I felt. Um, but yeah, it was actually really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So who would have thought um, that Nishante would be eating antelope? But yeah, so yeah, so we had dinner and it was good. And then I just feel like my eyes just draining. Um, so I decided to just call it a night, come back. I'm just going to shower and then just relax and try to just pass out. And then tomorrow I'm going to wake up early and then we're going to do a Bokoro, which is basically just like a little canoe. Um, so we'll do that. And then in the afternoon, we'll do another game drive and find those giraffes. So I'm excited. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a good first, first afternoon in the Delta. <laughs> See you guys tomorrow.